In kickstarting this channel, the first video we had in mind had to be this one. In the vast landscape of YouTube, essay-style videos might not be the crowd pullers, but with this one, we hope to give you some of the best insight we have to offer. My career background is in civil engineering in both environmental and governmental work, and my better half, well, she's an ace at accounting, having served as a controller and chief financial officer for rapidly growing private engineering and manufacturing firms. We were both semi-newbies at rural living. My parents had about an acre in the outskirts of Boston, and my wife's grandparents, originally from Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, were farmers with a five-acre slice of Sacramento when it was still a burgeoning farming city. So we've got a bit of both a suburban and rural streak in our genes. With our mixed bag of experiences, we'll try to pass on some wisdom we gathered transitioning from a metropolis back to the simplicity of rural living. Are we any different from you? Well, you be the judge. And do let us know, we're all ears. As for us, we started from the bustling city of Sacramento with its millions of inhabitants and made our way to a growing rural area of about 50,000. Having been city folks, the rural life had its allure, but despite all our book smarts, there were twists and turns we never saw coming. Some of these revelations are almost too embarrassing to admit, while others knocked our socks off. So, if you're contemplating making the swap to rural living, this channel can be one of your guides. If you're one of us and already living rurally, we can commiserate over the challenges. And feel free to add any advice to our newcomers in the comments. Mind you, these are just our experiences. But hey, at least you'll be a step ahead of us when we stuffed our lives into boxes and loaded them onto a moving van two decades ago. By the way, if you enjoy our video, we'd love it if you could give us a like and subscribe. It helps us spread our videos to a wider audience. Besides, our forthcoming video on buying rural property is one you wouldn't want to miss. Thanks and let's hit the road. First thing to say, the impulse that brought us here to this rural area. The outdoors, the livestock and pets, the space, less traffic and less density in general have all met or exceeded our expectations. In some ways, I don't think we realized how much we wanted this lifestyle. So I would say if you crave the slower pace or less interaction with people and more interaction with nature, then you really do want to live rurally. Just be prepared for the pros and cons. Yeah, first off, one thing that surprised us about rural living is what my wife calls the long view. She describes it as the feeling she gets when we're out on the rural highway around here and can see for miles. On days when we return to our hometown after being on a vacation in a more dense area, we laugh because there's a moment when we pass Sacramento and head north toward our home that brings such a sense of relief. Years ago, we realized it's the long view. Rural areas all over the world have different types of outdoor experiences, but give a similar feel. Okay, we're recording this on Valentine's Day, and I know we must be sounding like we're trying to make this place seem romantic. Well, guilty, but you get the idea. We can breathe out here, though. Let's get to the more tangible differences. Next up, in our area, housing is old. If your rural area is like ours, most of the housing and buildings were constructed 30, 40, or even 50 years ago. Though we do have some new apartment-type rental units being constructed, new single-family housing is limited. There are several planned developments that linger on and on in the planning stages for years. So what does that mean? If you want the latest gadgets or decorative touches in your home, you'll have to do it yourself. We were lucky enough to find a property with a newer home on it. Still, we had to redo the first floor to get the open concept and larger kitchen with nice appliances and countertops we wanted. We've also spent a considerable amount creating an outdoor entertaining area. So, unlike searching the weekend newspaper for the newest subdivisions being built in the city, you'll have to think creatively or simply not care if you have pink tiles in your bathroom. To offset, I'll say that most rural houses are custom built and have good bones. Along with older housing, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that housing and investments in rural areas tend to appreciate at a much slower rate than in the city. Our 10-acre property has appreciated with all of California real estate, but probably at about half the rate. So, a word of advice, don't invest in a rural area with the idea of rapid appreciation. That goes for home improvements too. We knew this when we moved here and chose our area because we planned to eventually retire here. The slow appreciation didn't matter to us, and I shouldn't say it didn't matter. Well, what I mean is it didn't matter as much. In suburban life, we moved frequently from one part of the city to another depending on work, but with this change, we planned 
and have stayed in the same home for more than 20 years. Moving on, the next thing that strikes you is the stark disparity in household income. Sacramento takes pride in its higher incomes, which significantly shape its local business economy. We're about two hours north of the city, and our community is more than $20,000 behind in household income. It affects every part of our life out here. Sacramento has no problem supporting all types of restaurant or entertainment venues. You'll find bowling alleys, skating rinks, miniature golf, local live theaters, and such in every part of the Sacramento metro area. In the countryside, non-essential businesses struggle. By the time families pay for essentials like housing, food, energy, and medical, there's little left over. We knew about the disparity in household income when we moved here. We were fortunate enough to bring a job with us. But once here, having sufficient income doesn't make it easier when your wife wants to dress to the nines for a night out on the town, and then you realize your new best friends are saving for their kids' team uniforms. And turns out there's no local dress to the nines venue anyway. A potluck along with streaming a movie or having a game night are more popular forms of entertainment. Over the years, we've learned to love this difference, but it was quite a shock when we first came here. Also, we soon learned that if you want a business in a rural area, historically, the ones that flourish are those providing fundamental services. Car repair shops, medical offices, gas stations, and food markets. Other services like tree trimming, welding, photography, or musician can be a great side hustle, but it's difficult to make a full-time income from them. I say historically because that's changing, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. But in the past, there's always been less disposable income in rural areas, posing a challenge for non-essential businesses to flourish. Well, I will say, it seems like the local ice cream shop might be the most essential of the non-essential businesses here. After all, who can resist a scoop or two of comfort on a warm country day? Next up, the political landscape comes into play. I won't go into this much as it's a hot topic these days, but to explain a rural point of view versus city, let me say that with a lesser dependence on government due to low population density, rural areas tend to lean more conservative. I wouldn't let politics stop you from going after a dream of rural living. If you're more liberal-leaning, you'll be in the minority, but I don't think you'll experience a big backlash for having contrary views. You know, I say that as long as you aren't on a crusade to change the hearts and minds of rural people. Living out here, you may even start to see why lower density makes them more conservative in their views. If you have 10,000 cars leaving a downtown sporting event in the city, you need rules, police, stoplights, and traffic monitors to get everyone out of there safely. In our area, the biggest event is Sunday service attendance at the church. If you peel out of the parking lot, want to know what will happen? The pastor will call your brother or your spouse or worst, your mother to tell them to tell you to slow down before you hurt someone. See what I mean? Density is the difference between our ways of life and need for government. Rural communities don't need those hundred pages of governmental parking regulations or extra stoplights to clog up the roads or hidden road cameras to keep tabs on everyone. High density creates the need for all that. Then next, I guess we have to talk about the poverty rate. In Sacramento, it hovers around 15%, and that alone is quite sad, but in our rural area, it's more like 25%. It sounds alarming, and it is. I've never been anywhere that had so many Facebook forum posts asking for assistance or information about local food banks or pleas for help with a car repair. As a side note, I'll be interested to see if we get a longer-term lowering of these statistics with some of the improvements on the horizon. But as a general rule, rural areas have more poverty, there's less money flowing in and out of these areas overall at this point. People rely a lot on helping one another versus city life where most everything is a cash transaction. As for the rural side of things, these lower economic facts have a sobering effect on cost of living increases. Prices in rural areas tend to rise slower than in the city. Next up, here's one that makes us laugh. We grapple with the invasion of nature. We're not surrounded by concrete anymore. Instead, we have acres of land that nature wants to reclaim. Weeds, wildlife, and the elements all require constant attention to keep in check. For years after we moved here, my wife planted vegetables in the garden and flowers around our home. We didn't realize that we had entered into a competition with nature with these plantings. Birds, deer, wild turkeys, squirrels, rabbits, feral cats, and moles all feasted off our hard work. And let me tell you, the squirrels out here, they're practically militant in their friendliness. 
if you consider stealing your tomatoes a form of hospitality. Vegetable gardens are a combat zone. Unless you want to use chemicals, be prepared to put up fencing, or better yet, build a covered greenhouse to protect your harvest. Yeah, when I think of the days of living in the city where I walked down a concrete sidewalk to a community garden surrounded by concrete and protected by fencing, I can only imagine how city people are boasting about their farming endeavors. Our first year growing vegetables here, I swear I thought we were being punked. So don't laugh when I say this, but it's a war zone out here, people. Be prepared to defend your crops. On to another funny one we didn't expect. The nights? They're pitch dark. No light pollution at all. It's a different kind of tranquility, one where you can see the stars every night, but one that requires a flashlight or headlamp to navigate. My wife still isn't used to the level of darkness around here, and I have to admit the cost of running exterior floodlights all night is a budget item in our household. I know, crazy, but I just can't deny her this comfort. Okay, on to a cringy topic for city people. Gun ownership. It's a difference I hesitate to mention, but it's significant. Honestly, we expected this difference, but not the numbers. In the state of California, one in four Californians own guns, but in rural areas, the ratio is much higher. There aren't any statistics to verify numbers, but I'd venture to say that with the enthusiasm for hunting prevalent in rural areas, the gun ownership ratio must be above 75%, and more than that, every household with guns has multiple guns. Hearing guns go off is common where it's permitted. Next up, road maintenance, a oh, wow, another eye-opener. Unlike city roads that are all maintained by the government, many rural roads are privately owned by the adjacent landowners. As a civil engineer, even I was surprised at how prevalent unmaintained dirt roads are around here. Maintenance of these roads are a collective private responsibility of the surrounding homeowners and neighbors. Ours is like this too. In our 20 years here, we've had to reseal and chip our road a few times. The cost is borne by everyone on the road. Some roads have formal cost-sharing agreements and others like ours are informal. Either way, if you want a surface that holds the dust down, you'll likely have to pay for it. It's funny to think that in the countryside, road maintenance involves learning a skillful dodging of potholes rather than actual road repair. Yeah, everyone complains about roads in rural communities. Ask me. I used to listen to them all. Along the same lines, we have to talk about postal service and trash pickups. They're done at the main road, for postal service, we had to invest in a large locking rural type mailbox to accept our mail and any small packages that might be delivered. Thankfully, if we get a large box, like a monthly delivery from Amazon, the carriers, United Parcel Service, Federal Express, and even the post office will bring them to our door. In our 20 years here, we've had those mailboxes run over twice and a handful of times there were attempts to break into the box to take the mail. Thankfully, today, with the use of email, we receive monthly statements and bills electronically. With regard to trash service, that's also at the main road. We have a large recycle bin from the local waste company we take down to the main road each week for garbage recycling. Our neighbors use an ATV to take their trash can down, but I'm using an attachment to carry it down behind my truck. So add that to your cost and inconvenience. I'm telling you, that one's not a fun rural reality. Well, on to one I bet you could guess. Living in a small town also means everyone knows everyone, and probably their dog's name too. Sometimes it's like living in a television series, where you can't even take a stroll without bumping into someone who knows your life story. Once, we were in a local restaurant and I was talking to my wife about a work contract. I was diving deep into the negatives of it, completely oblivious that our waitress was the sister-in-law of the person I was spewing about. Talk about a sitcom moment, right? Oops. To say I had a bit of splaining to do would be an understatement. It was a rough one, but it served as a crash course on why I should always mind my P's and Q's when out and about. Because in a small town, people are not just connected, they're interconnected. On the sunny side of all this, there's a comforting sense knowing you're dealing with the same people in your daily life. You, you know them. They know you. It keeps us on our best behavior with one another and fosters a genuine sense of community. Because nothing says community like knowing the intimate details of one another's lives and all their pets and livestock too. And coming to the one where all the change is occurring for rural people. One where our views have certainly evolved since moving here. For as long as I can remember, my observation is that rural families send their children out into the world. And then eventually, once they've had enough education and practical experience, 
or saved a substantial amount of their income, these children might return to their roots. In our area, this is common. These multi-generational families separate while some members go to live in more urban areas. In fact, if you had asked me about raising a family in a small rural area years ago, I would have given the standard city answer and said, no way. I would have told you the educational, social, and employment opportunities are too limited in rural areas. But this is changing and rapidly. The biggest change is online selling opportunity. If you can create some type of goods or services in a rural area, there are many more avenues to having long-distance customers than ever before. For instance, something as unlikely as a clothing designer can thrive. You design and make your clothing and then develop an online customer base for your income. Income avenues like this have opened everything up for rural communities. Even higher education is being provided from top universities in an online format. You don't have to live in a major city to have these opportunities any longer. Today, multi-generational families can stay together to create a robust income and life in rural areas. All the detriments to rural living are sincerely being reduced or eliminated, and the plus side of it is becoming super desirable. I think we were a bit ahead of the curve on this sentiment change. Living here, we now see more and more people interested in returning to our nation's original lifestyle of rural living or homesteading a property. Whatever your interest in this regard, we welcome you. Okay, that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.